to me, simple jig's the most versatile bait in the tackle box. Don't have a water temperature that controls it. Don't have a time of year. The only thing separating you and a jig and being a great jig fisherman is yourself, how you look at it. How many people here think and have made the comment that, Joe, I just don't think I'm, I'm, I'm fishing my jig right. How many guys ever say, I'm not sure if I get, I know when I get a bite. You can raise your hand. This ain't an alcohol and almonds, man. You can raise your hand. <laughs> I've been to them. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I did take my uncle the one I was telling you else like that. <laughs> you know, the way, the way you jig fish and, and people wondering if I'm getting a bite, we're going to try to clarify some of that today. Throwing a jig is no different than throwing a worm. That's all it is. The best part about a jig is you really ain't got to wait to set the hook. People say, like, when you set the hook? When you feel tick, 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 or thunk. He don't have pockets. He don't have a safe deposit box. He don't have armpits. He don't have a catcher's mitt. When your line jumps, there's only one place he's got it. He's either got it sitting on it or he's in his mouth, and both of them are real in the same. Blister him. When you're with a jig, when you feel that initial bite, you ain't got to reel down. You don't have to do all that. You set the hook. When you're jig fishing, and your 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 frame of mind's got to be a little different. It really does. We're going to simplify that. Period. We're going to change it up. I got two rods. I throw it on most time. It's a quantum seven foot four and a seven six. I flip with a seven six medium heavy. I cast my jig most of the time with a seven four medium heavy. That's skipping docks, rocks, anything that gets in the way, bicycles, wash machines. It's two rods. The line choice is real simple. If it's super clear and I'm on fish deep, I throw 16 pound sunline shooter. That's for my small jig. If I'm flipping, I'm gonna do 20 or 22 if it's a big jig. But I'm gonna stay somewhere around 18 to 20 pound line always. People sometimes wonder when you're fishing docks and shallow cover, Gerald, can they see the line? No, fluorocarbon does not reflect sunlight. Question is, a gentleman asked me, do I tie a polymer or not on fluorocarbon? Absolutely not. And I will show you guys, I tie a knot, I don't know what you call it. I learned it on the farm hauling hay. We'll call it the double shin dough. I don't know. I double my line, twist it up, run it through the loop, takes about two seconds. I have three tag ends. But what this does is it doubles the line everywhere it touches. So when you pull it down, I have it burn it. I went to the Berkeley plant back years ago when I was with them. They had the guy in the little white trench coat that they do, the little lab. He's got all his machines and he's got all his little knots. And he said, would you like to try your knot against mine? And I'm like, well, absolutely. I'm a redneck. I'm like, sure. It's like tying trucks together. Sure, tie them up. <laughs> so he ties his and his breaks at like 98.7, 98.8. I tied mine. I broke it 99.4 and 99.5. So I said, you keep working in your lab coat, and I'm going to keep bailing hay. Bait I throw 90% of the time is a 3 8 ounce ball head jig. They'll be made this year by a company called Buckeye out of South Carolina. The jig's going to be called Balling Out. I've had this jig made for about three years by myself. Wasn't for sale, and I have worked on this jig. It ain't something that I said, man, if you put my name on that, you give me $11 a pair of house slippers. No. This is a bait that I went out and built, and I won money with over and over and over and kind of kept it to myself. Then a company come to me and said, can we make the jig you want? I said, only if you make it exactly like I had it. The Weed Guards Design Pacific sits right down on the hook. Don't have no way to show you that. Let's, God, that guy looks a lot like me. You can see how close the Weed Guard is. See, you don't need a PowerPoint when you got this. That guy's going to lose that fish if he keeps jerking around with him up there. You can see that. The Weed Guard's sitting right down on top of the hook. You don't want a Weed Guard on any jig. I don't care who makes it. If your hook ends here and your weed guard sticks out here like that, you got trouble. You got more trouble than you can reel in, I promise you. The weed guard's not sitting on the hook. Every time you cast it, it's going to go right over a limb. Y'all ever noticed that, how it just fling, it just rings that limb? And then no matter how hard you shake it, it don't go anywhere. And the next thing you know, you're throwing an Iconelli fit and ripping all the bushes down off the bank. <laughs> it's because your weed guard's so high up, it offers that a chance to hook something. You want the weed guard right down on the hook? What a great question. The gentleman's asking when I flip in that area, whether it's a brush pile or a boat dock, do I just fish it back by the target, I think, and then just burn it back in? Or do I make a pitch in there, and I think, man, that's a good looking tree, and I'll fish it out to that tree, and then from there,
Welcome to Bass University TV, an online video training course where you'll learn champion bass fishing techniques from pro anglers Pete Gluzek, Mike Iaconelli, and their touted special guests. From on the water to in the classroom, you'll learn sound techniques and strong fundamental bass fishing skills. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Information is power in the sport of fishing. So learn from the very best. Subscribe to Bass University TV today.